All right, this is your night to be set free from worry and all the excess baggage of your past. Tonight is your night to be set free from stress, from worry about money, bills, depression, racism, anger. I mean, tonight is your night. Are you ready to be set free? Well, you are going to be set free in Jesus' name. We know that you are not watching this program by accident. We know that you have tuned in, and tonight truly is your night. Are you sick of carrying around all that extra weight? Well, Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly in every area. And before we go to our esteemed guests with me around this table, I want to remind you that we have our free giveaway, Arm for the Future. This is from Ephesians 6, and it is so good for you to know and always remind yourself, especially when you're going through problems, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness, and how we can take a Authority over that principality and powers of darkness in prayer and we can begin to see Jesus fight our battles so there's a number please call the number on the screen get prayer and then also request our free giveaway now I want to introduce you to our esteemed panel of guests these people are people just like you and I that have really dealt with some major issues in their past but they are they are living a free totally free life and I want to welcome to family and friends Jim Doss here and Patty Sands Debbie Mason and Connie Leela sure these people are going to share in just a moment from their life uh, story just how they have been set free now, I'm going to open up this discussion because I want it to be a discussion and really not canned just from your heart the real life issues that you guys have faced and how the Lord set you free so neat about this is Debbie and I were talking earlier about when we're overwhelmed with feelings and I'm sure at times we feel overwhelmed is that you begin to shut down but tonight right. we're going to give hope and yes. we're going to give direction to you if you've dealt with things which we all deal with things so listen closely because I'm sure we'll probably hit one of your buttons you know we're That's all just right. people That's right. hurting needing God yep. One of the things, Connie, that I had to deal with, um, probably it started about two years ago, was being a good Christian and living by the word and, and living God's, God's way. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my second marriage and it ended up in separation and ended up in a divorce. And for me, having to deal with the shame, because here I am, as Christians, we're all given this guideline and we shouldn't be divorced. And we should, I mean, God's word says, I hate divorce. And to be going through a second divorce and the shame that I felt to be going through a second divorce, but I held on to God's word that said there's no condemnation Amen. for Excellent. those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And he has set me free from the guilt and the condemnation of going through a second divorce because he showed me that it was his will. And his perfect will in my life was to be set free from a bad marriage and that there is no condemnation there is no shame even though I've gone through to a second divorce and I believe there's a lot of Christians out there that have gone through a second divorce and they feel like they're being under a spotlight but with Jesus there's no spotlight and also like why even try I mean I I just need to give up and I need right. to run right. into the world and I want you to hear that's where the shame truly comes right. from right. because the devil is the one that condemns us but Jesus Christ truly has if we really believe that he died on the cross and every sin that we have committed or has been committed against us that he can set us free and forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that all unrighteousness means all and so if you are under shame, if you've stopped going to church because you don't feel like you measure up, well, guess what? There's a whole church filled with people that in the natural, in themselves, do not measure up. But that's why Jesus Christ came, and he came so that through him we can measure up. And that's his gift to us, and it's truly a prayer way. Please call. Don't, don't let depression and don't let that shame grip you any longer. Call right now. Who else? I, I grew up in a time in, 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 in this nation in the 50s and 60s in the South where racism was uh, a strong factor. And it, it was a very difficult time. But I grew up with parents who encouraged me to, that God will provide, that God would deliver us. And, it was, and you saw threats and 
people were threatened. We saw crosses burnt. But How did that make you feel? Yeah. You know, being young at that time, you sort of took on the personality of what you saw other people doing. There was anger there. And uh, some people, like you talked earlier about crawling into a shell. People crawled into a shell, didn't want to confront it. But my parents were, were, were good people. They were godly people. And they taught, you know, that God is still on the throne. No matter what we're confronted with here, God is still on the throne. And how appropriate. Here we are in, in February, uh, Black History Month, Black right. History Celebration just passed January and Dr. King's birthday. Significant times in American history. Um, I wanted to be free from that. I found that serving in the military, it was the first time that I had an opportunity to be in an integrated situation where there were just more than, than blacks, but all of God's people. And I found that I had to pray about some things so I could be free and move to the next level to be able to deal with those men who I was going to war with. We were in a life and death situation there. And so God started to answer some prayers, start to kindle new relationships with other people that I, I just didn't have a, a clue about their lifestyle, but it enhanced me and it freed me. So when I started to share about some things in my life, uh, I got encouragement from, 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 uh, from other men and women who were different. Right. And I think it's key. We have to have a desire inside to be free and to go to the next level. And then what happens, it allows God to use you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't limit God in the, in the areas and the opportunities that he gives you to bring glory to his name. That's why it's so imperative that, that we as, as Christians, we have to understand it because we're in life and yes, death certainly, situations certainly, in the spiritual certainly. battles. Right. We have to embrace each other. We have to embrace each other's weaknesses, yes. our strengths. It doesn't matter what color you are, but we're in a life and death situation. And, and be encouraged. That's right. Be encouraged that love one another. And, and I, I, I love it because I see... James and Emma and how they love people and how they've really came through this and, and God has really defined you in such a manner that you've walked out what your parents have taught you. That's right. You See, have, and you, know, you really have a hunger for what yes, God right. wants, you know, there, there's something inside of you that's saying this is not right and, and, and okay, this is not right what I'm being confronted with, but it's not right for me to also be wrong or to confront it. In the wrong, in the wrong way. Right. I have to say, God, really, give me direction. Give me peace. Give me uh, understanding as to how I'm to confront this situation, the words I'm to say. And when we have that within us, it comes out right. Exactly. It really right. comes out right. And I think we have been blessed over the years. Uh, we, we moved to the West Coast, and our daughters were born on the West Coast. And we had a drawing back to the South. And I was saying, God, you know, I don't want to go back to the South. <laughs> Because I don't want my kids to experience what I experienced. Right. But uh, we yielded to the call of God on our lives. And God placed us in the North Church. And we were in the perfect will of God. We didn't fight against that. And our girls grew up in this church. And I tell you, how the, the... You the, guys were kind of at, at one time the only people of color <laughs> in the church. And that was so strange for us, for my husband and myself, because we were from an area in Texarkana where we were the first church in the area to have a mix of races. The mm -hmm. very first one, we had the KKK threatening our lives. And here we are in Dallas and there's no mix of color. Right. And so they were one of the ones that were the instrumental people in bridging that gap and there truly is a gap bridge but you know Jim mentioned about his family and his parents and they taught him the Word of God and how that stuck with him but so many people have been raised in homes without that kind of input without parents showing them the way in fact they've been abused and if you are in a situation right now where you need God to help you. You maybe are in an abusive situation. Perhaps your, your mate is abusing you and your kids. Please, I ask you, the first step, the very first step is get someone to pray for you. And then there's a lot of good agencies to help you. So please call right now, get prayer, because prayer truly does work. Where two or more agree is touching concerning anything. God hears our prayers and begins to move on our behalf. So please call right now there is hope and there is help and it starts with prayer talking to god and he's ready to help you
You know, one thing that, that um, I really learned as a, a young minister's wife is that I have to take responsibility for, for the feelings that I felt because I grew up in a home that was very angry and very desperate and my, my dad was real abusive physically and verbally and, and you just take that in as a young child and I didn't realize that I had those grievances in my life till I got older and, and I started thinking, well, what am I going to do with it? I have to take responsibility or I will lay down and die and I will succumb to these emotions for the rest of my life pass them on to my kids my kids will pass them on to my grandkids so I'm gonna stop the madness as you've heard before right. in different right. campaigns I'm gonna stop the the ungodliness and be obedient to the Word of God because if we take responsibility then we're obedient to the Word of God mm -hmm. because it says here it in mark 11 no excuse me Colossians 313 bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another forgive as the Lord forgave you because there became a moment when I was I was praying and, and I had I really harbored a lot of bitterness against my father because I saw the results of his abuse in my my brother totally disappeared from society he you know sold drugs and and my mother was into alcohol my family was a mess and and God began to to deal with me to get my life right mm -hmm. so one of the things I had to do was call my dad and ask him to forgive me because I'd removed myself from his life and I called him and and it was it was a hard thing to do probably one of the hardest things to do but I did it out of sheer obedience to God's word and God began to free me up like never before my some of my family members have gotten saved since that time and you know what I don't bear the burden of my father anymore I don't bear those ties and and since I began to walk in this I've shared it with the other young people and they began to to yeah, see right. things work in their life they began to see a uh, uh, forgiveness flow and I think it was all worth it because the Holy Ghost could use something so devastating in my life but in 2 Corinthians it says comfort those with the comfort that you receive from Jesus Amen. Christ that is my ministry and I will be willing to obey God in anything if he can use it in my life for the good of his people yeah. awesome you know we we always if we're not set free from our past we are destined to repeat it. Mm -hmm. And you need to hear that because God truly wants to set you free. Call right now. This is your moment. You are going to be set free from the weight that has been crashing down upon you. Tonight is your night. Today is your day. Call right now, please. Well, I enjoyed what she said because the Word of God sets you free. That's, That's it. it. That's and uh, That's I was diagnosed with cancer. And that was so terrifying and such a nightmare. And uh, I opened up my Bible and the Lord gave me a scripture, you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So I had a choice whether to believe that scripture or not. And then he said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And a sound mind doesn't come unless you read the word of God. Mm -hmm. and I, and I love that point because in, God spoke to Joshua in, in, in Joshua 1.8 yeah. and, and one of the things, one of the words that jumped out at me as I read that passage, yeah. it said meditate, yeah. meditate, yeah. meditate. So in order for us to change the, uh, the course, that, uh, the direction that we were heading, we really had to meditate on the on Word the of God. Chew on it. And chew yeah. on chew it. And on feed it. on and it. It a part of you. Yes. That's yes. exactly right. Pastor, Pastor Kenny pray, uh, preached last Wednesday about Praying over your scriptures, praying over your promises. Yes. Because there's, there, it says we have great and precious promises as our inheritance from God. And if we believe in them, we'll see those things come to pass. But it's not just reading and not just believing, but it's soaking it with prayer. And it's also awesome. moving it from your mind to your heart. Right. I Excellent. constantly had to remind yes. myself. That's right. That he was your same bearer. Yeah. Be yeah. You know, yeah. Revelation 12 11 we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our of testimony. Of our testimony. And, That's and, it. And, and if we meditate on God's word, then our words that come forth are going to be God's word. Right. And there's power. It Amen. begins, that word of God mm -hmm. will begin to move and change Amen. the course yeah. of our life, That's the right. course of your life. Yeah, exactly. And I'm telling you, just as Debbie is sharing right now, the beginning yes. is prayer. Yes. When you are fearful, yes. when you're afraid, when yeah. you are just consumed with shame, mm -hmm. with depression, mm -hmm. with yeah. loneliness, mm -hmm. and as yeah. Debbie is sharing right now about fear, yeah. cry out to God. 
and he's going to begin to meet you at that need. Debbie, yeah, what else? Every day I would hear this voice saying to me, uh, you might as well give up. Everybody with cancer dies. You know, you're reading your scriptures. It's just a mental exercise. Right. It's not doing anything. Right. And I knew that that voice was uh, from the devil. Right. And so I'd read my scriptures. It'd take me about 45 minutes. By the time I finished reading those scriptures, I couldn't hear that voice for that day. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The next day... You needed fresh manna. The right. yeah, same right. thing would happen. Yeah, You're right. going to die. You're not going to make it. The devil doesn't give up easily. Mm -hmm. no. 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 Yeah, and I did that for two years solid. Read my yeah. scriptures every day. The scriptures that God had given me. It, what it was doing was it was cleansing my mind. And it was disciplining my mind to right. believe that what God says really will come to pass. Even if you can't see anything. Because faith is... It's not what you see, it's what you don't see. Yep. And so the Word of God gave me faith, even though my circumstances were very negative. And very almost hopeless. He yeah. does hear our cries. That's right. And can I share one of your cries? One of the cries of her heart. Debbie had a brand new little girl, little baby girl, but she also had another cry in her heart. She wanted another child. Yep. She had a word from God that she was going to have a son. And in the hope, against all hopelessness because she had been told she wouldn't because of chemotherapy and all that probably wouldn't be able to conceive and have a baby right and i have a three-year-old son named christian healthy strong and nothing wrong with him. yeah he's very <laughs> strong <laughs> nothing very wrong at all very very it was healthy. a promise yes it was right. a promise and it always yeah. starts with a promise and if you have baggage tonight you know you have to will and say you know i don't want this anymore and then you take the Word of God and you open it and you say, Holy Spirit, lead me to the scriptures that yes. will minister to what I need right now. And He's faithful to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can release those things as you read those scriptures. And, Excellent. And you know, let me share this real quick because I want to encourage the people out there. You know, I have a 14-month-old little boy. And if he falls down and he gets hurt and he cries, you better believe that I'm there in a second. Yeah. Uh -huh. And That's you right. know what? My and you're world, picking him up. Exactly. Yeah, my right. world stops when he cries out, Mama. Mm -hmm. And I pull him up close to my chest and he lays his head and he rests on me because we have the security and the comfort. Mm -hmm. If you are hurting, if you are overwhelmed and you're crying out to God, right. know that he's coming to your aid right now. That's, That's scripture. Right. You cry out and I will hear your cry and he's coming to you tonight to comfort, to encourage, to have the intimacy, to let you rest your head on his chest tonight. Be encouraged. God's for you. He's not against you. He's going to help you where you need him. Amen. You know, uh, Please take that word that Connie just shared. Cry out to God. And you may, in your own self, lack the strength to really cry out to God on your own behalf. And that's why we have people ready to pray for you. They are ready to pray so that God will hear your prayers and begin to do something in your life. And I'm telling you, we've seen people healed of cancer. We've seen people healed right. in their emotions. We've seen people healed in every area, find direction for their life, have financial breakthroughs, and it starts with prayer. And then also, we want to send you our free giveaway, Arm for the Future. This is from Ephesians 6. It's so you can be armed for the future so that your tomorrows can be better than your yesterdays. Right. Your tomorrows can begin to have God's defense, His protection around your life and your family's life. Now, as we go into a message that my husband preached, house of prayer, how we are, each one of us, the house of prayer, please continue to call the number on the screen because truly that prayer is going to accomplish something in your life. Stick with us. We're going to be right back. Thanks, you guys. That was awesome. First Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, Do you not realize that all of you together are the house of God and the Spirit of God lives among you in His house? He lives in His house. He's inside you. Every day of your life. So you can never feel really alone. You can never be alone. Not really. Not as a Christian. You know why? you got almighty God living inside of you. You can never, never be alone. Never. Because you've got God with you. 
when I was sick and I was alone, I said one statement, if you remember it, I said, what about my son? Just like this gentleman on this accident with a tractor. I said, oh God. But I heard something down inside me say, God, I may be all alone, but I'm not really alone. And if I have God on my side, I can conquer anything. And I'm never alone. I always have God on my side. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never leave you. He'll always be with you throughout your whole, all through life. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Understand this. Get it deep inside your heart that you're no longer strangers or foreigners, but your fellowship, fellowship with the saints and you're part of the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible tells us. It's called in Ephesians, the second chapter, that you're members of the household of God. That's where you're at. God's house is a house of prayer. And we shouldn't have it anything else. When Jesus went and turned the temple and turned things over and messed up the temple and everything because they were selling things there that were not really of God's value. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And that's got to be in all of us. We've got to have that deep inside of us that we say, I believe that my Father is listening to me. When I feel like I can't do something, I know that in my limited self, I can, there's things I cannot do, but I have somebody with me. It's called Christ who lives inside me. And I turn and I pray in Jesus' name, not in Lawrence's name, not in Coral's name, but I pray in Jesus' name who lives inside me. And I say, in Jesus' name, all things are possible. Only believe. And I pray it in Jesus' name. You know what happens every time I pray in Jesus' name? I get a miracle. Now I can pray in Lawrence's name and I won't get a miracle. But when I pray in Jesus' name, I will get a miracle. Everybody say miracle. miracle. When I pray in his name, you know, I don't have to be afraid to ask God in Jesus' name. I've been giving that legal right. I can boldly come into God's presence. Say in Jesus' name. I asked you for a miracle right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? I'll always get my miracle. It never fails me. It keeps happening over and over again. You can look at, look at John, the 16th chapter, verse 23 and 24, where it says this, And in that name you will ask me nothing. More surely I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. You know why you got to do it? You don't pray out there. You have Christ in here. You got to be right. Now, if you're sinning, there's a guff, there's a problem there, and you're keeping from having the victory. You need to get rid of those things, get rid of sin. Sin is bad, sin brings death. But when you're living right with God, you can say, In Jesus' name. And something wonderful began to happen. You could go on to say in verse 24, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Asked, listen, ask and you will receive that your joy may be what? Full. You have him with you every day. You wake up in the morning. Hello, Jesus. At noon. Hello, Jesus. In the afternoon. Hello, Jesus. And when you go to bed, good night, Jesus. 